I'm Tim Malloy with the Palm Beach Civic Association. It is Thursday, April the 9th. Here's the very latest. There are 16 known cases of the coronavirus in the town of Palm Beach. Two of our residents have succumbed to it. You're in a shelter in place order. As you well know, what that means is, and you should know by now, stay home. Stay in your house, your apartment, your condo. Only go out if you're going out for food, for brief exercise, if you have to go to a doctor or a vet or the pharmacy. That's it, that's what a shelter place order is. If you do go out, it's not mandated, but you should definitely wear a mask. This is just a balaclava, this is a, um, a ski mask, which is very easy to get. Go out around town and you'll see that most people are not doing that, and they should be. That is uh, not my advice, I'm no doctor, but that's from uh, all the health experts that we've spoken to. So the town update has just come in. There's some interesting new items to take a look at, and here's Wendy Rutledge. Tim, in today's Town of Palm Beach COVID-19 update, the town came out with a new warning. The town is aware that we are all sheltering in place, many of us working out of our homes, and we're all using a lot more than we ever did some of these online communication platforms like Zoom. Zoom is a website that families or businesses can use to set up a video call between lots of participants. School districts have been using Zoom to gather their students for an online video lesson. It turns out some bad actors have figured out a way to penetrate through the Zoom security and interrupt virtual classrooms or other gatherings with obscenities they place on the shared screen. For its part, Zoom is actively working to update and improve its security and make classroom video chats and all Zoom meetings safer and more protected from outside unwanted intruders. So Tim, the town wants us all to know that a cybersecurity division of Homeland Security is all over this problem. They are aware of it and trying to fix it. In the meantime, the town warns that we should all be very careful not to open up any deceptive types of emails or texts, or even to go to websites that advertise some connection with COVID-19. This is a town of between eight and 15,000 people. It's hard to tell how many people are here right now, given a lot of people didn't leave and a lot of people didn't come here as tourists. But put the number in there, 10, 12,000. 40% of the people, 40% of the people who live in this town live in a multi-residency building. In other words, a co-op or a condo. That's a huge number. And those people are more at risk. Many are elderly. So that is a, a mission. The mayor, who has many missions and has done a wonderful job here, is on right now. And I spoke to her by phone. We have put new measures in place with fire rescue, police, and all our first responders to protect both of them in the event of an emergency and our fellow residents. So let me start there by saying we've done a great job. Our leadership has established protocols that have certainly led to major initiatives prior to the rest of the state of Florida. I'd like to talk a little bit this morning about condominiums and our efforts there. We identified several weeks ago within our community where the condos were most at risk. We have a large number of certainly elderly that live in very close contact with one another. The fire rescue developed a best practice guide to address all of the common touch points in a building as well as personnel and processes. Since then, the fire rescue has been meeting via web conference with condo managers and board members to go through the best practices and help them implement them within their buildings. Many of these buildings had already taken steps to protect their residents. It's important for all of us to know that these are in place and we are improving them as we go. It's a very fluid situation. One of the things that were requested is that each building have three contacts in order to supplement the efforts of fire rescue. In other words, a board member, a manager of the building, and then a resident that was always on site because many times a board member may be out of town and or the manager may live off island. So again, allowing that contact with fire rescue to eliminate any additional protective measures. One of the things that I had discussed with public safety committee a month ago was my worry that this at-risk population would also fall under loneliness or lack of 
contact with others so that possibly a a sunshine call where each person has a buddy that they can identify, that they call frequently or let them know of any medical or food shortages so that they can be taken care of immediately wherein they may not be able to identify from the outside by fire rescue or the police. So we're doing the best we can to add new initiatives that will, again, safeguard our residents from any kind of health issue, which includes their own personal medical problems. You know, Mayor, that's fantastic. We, uh, the Civic Association is going to do something called Civic Goodwill. We're going to call every single Civic member. So anything we can do in tandem, but that sounds like great, great stuff you're doing. Well, and I'm grateful to the Civic Association. I think with that contact gives us the opportunity to personally address maybe a neighbor's problems or allow them to, if nothing else, contact the Civic Association or town management in the event that they can identify a neighbor in need. So please continue your efforts. This is a total town team effort, and we certainly want to work shoulder to shoulder in an attempt to keep everyone safe. Clearly no issue deserves more attention than the coronavirus and how to keep all of us safe. But to break from that for a moment, the census is coming around again and it is extremely important to the town as far as representation and a lot of people aren't paying much attention to it. Obviously clearly distracted right now. But here's Wendy Rutledge with a, a look at what you should be taking a look at. By now you are probably aware that the deadline to respond to the U.S. Census, that once a decade survey of the population, has been extended to mid-August. That, according to the town of Palm Beach, is a good thing because the response from local residents has been extremely low. And town officials estimate that could mean a loss of up to $30,000 per resident who does not respond. So if you lived, if you resided in Palm Beach as of April 1st of this year, that is how you should respond to the U.S. Census. And it is really so easy. It's Passover. Tomorrow is Good Friday, then Easter weekend. We will not be doing a newscast for the next couple of days, but we will break in with things that are of great importance if they do happen. Uh, We wish you all the best. Uh, Be safe, be well. We leave you with a a beautiful sunrise over the ocean and with great hope that uh, in weeks to come, things will get better, and, and they will. We'll see you soon.